Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy, and today we're going to pick up the apple charting from where we left off. Uh, we're going to attempt to finish our apple charting today, so it might. I I hope I can get that done in two videos, but we might use a third video, so expect uh, two or three videos out today. Um, but first and foremost, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion, and it's for entertainment purposes only. So, uh, getting into this video, we're going to briefly monitor our touch base on this 702 retracement right here. Uh, talk a little bit about yesterday's candle, but then we're going to play around with this Fib tool a little bit more. Uh, also, if you don't know why we have this, uh, are picking up from this point, um, you can, uh, if, and if you're not up to date, you can go watch the last video that I posted and uh, see how we got to where we're at. So, going into this video, we're going to look at this 702 retracement. So I'm going to zoom in here. Now I can see, uh, looking at the trading day from from Monday, um, this could be taken bullish or bearish. Now I say, I'll start with the bearish version. Um, as we're getting close to the 702, we are seeing some sell-off. Now at one point yesterday, this candle was actually a full green candle. Now, from that point on in the day, this was the selling pressure that transpired during the day. <clears throat> that is that is decent volume to get Apple price to move like that. But ultimately, it is a green candle. It's holding above our 618 retracement, and it is sort of a shape bottom. So that is a good sign for the bears. Now, looking more so at this trend line. I'm keeping an eye on this gap right here because if this were to trade down and meet up with this trend line, however way they have this trend line set, I would expect good volume off of here. So we are going to keep touching base on this 702 retracement. I do think that we are going to get a price to this towards this 702, but any type of structure like this on a retracement is not something that I want to be playing with. That's playing with fire in my opinion. Um, but that is, uh, we will touch base on that over the course of uh, this week, maybe into the, the rest of this month. But for now, I'm going to take down everything that we have drawn up here, and we're going to go over the extensions on a Fibonacci tool. Now, before I go into this, keep in mind, if I were, if I'm to bring up a price in the past, keep in mind that they have had a 7 to 1 stock split and a 4 to 1 stock split. So that is basically uh, increasing the amount of shares to lower the actual price of the stock. It does not change anything with the market cap of the company. So going into this the, the rest of this video, we're going to switch this to a weak chart. And the same way that I use the Fib tool up here from top of the move, bottom of the move, we're going to look at these large drops and put a Fib tool through them and see how um, the price of Apple over the course of history. We're going to look at the history of Apple stock. So we can start with this first one. This is the dot com boom. This is the year 2000. Now I can see just from this first initial drop, this is probably about a 702 retracement. Yep, pretty much a 702 retracement. We can zoom in for that. But we are not going to focus on that too much, but I mean that's just a prime example though. But top of the move, bottom of the move. Now this was not a slouch of a drop. This was a 82% drop. Holy, yeah, that was a pretty crazy drop. So we should have some decent extensions to go off of right here. Now I can see that we do have uh, a little bit of selling into these first two extension points. Now I can also see when we push this price, let's just put a horizontal line right there real quick. So there is selling pressure as we get to the previous all-time high right here. But ultimately when we do push that, we back test it and hold above it. That is why you see this price continue to run. Now we get a little sell off, a little sell off. Now what happens at the fully extended price? Now the fully extended price, uh, I shouldn't have moved it. You can see pretty much on the button. Now this isn't a slouch of a drop right here. This is people selling a fully extended stock, in my opinion. 
So this sell off from top of the move to the bottom of the move, 25%. Now is that justified of a fully extended stock? Uh, I wouldn't say so, but you gotta remember this um, is, is not gonna be 100% accurate. But this is the type of sell off I'm looking for for a fully extended stock. So uh, we're gonna take this tool down and we're gonna look at the percentage drop here. 60% drop. Now that is more justified to me of a of a fall from a fully extended stock. Now there's no way you can tell me that in 2007 during this housing market crash that Apple was properly priced up here. This is a large run and there's a lot of people that were able to buy the stock down here that could potentially sell and pull the rug out from underneath Apple. But if I were to look more in depth of this drop right here, I can see from top of the move, and we'll just take this first initial drop. I mean, this was a this was a bull trap all day. You're getting through your full extension price. You're thinking, oh, we're going to continue getting this push right here. But this ends up turning into a one, two, three, an ABC correction. Now this, like I mentioned, a 60% drop. We're going to put our Fib tool right through right through everything. Now I can see at my first extension point, same scenario, we fight to get over the all-time high price, but as we continue attempting to, we initially get this run up to our first extension. Now we do get some sell-off. We put this head and shoulders look, but ultimately this bull flag breaks out, and I can see congestion. I'll move this over just a little bit more. I see some congestion at my second extension point, but ultimately same scenario we get some sell-off at our all-time high price now is this first drop a justified drop right here 18 percent from a fully extended stock do i think that's a justified drop i don't know i don't think so and here we do get an exhaustive push through this fully extended stock right here so what is this percent drop and this is the year 2012 now you can't tell me after Apple has run 806% that it is properly priced. It is trading at fair value right here. Now it, it very well could have been. I do not know. I, I have to dive deeper into their financials at that time period. But if I don't think that the price of Apple is properly stocked at the moment, I probably wouldn't have thought at this time that it was properly priced. But looking at, we're going to take this FIB tool off because this is a justified drop right here. So top of the move, bottom of the move, Apple's price had dropped 45%. Okay, now we're talking, that is what I'm, that is what I'm trying to look for in a properly uh, overextended stock. That's the drop I'm looking for. So same scenario, we're going to go top of the move to the bottom of the move. Now I can see same thing. We got congestion off our first extension. We put in this quadruple top. Now, we do get some congestion. I should pull this over just a little bit more. We get some congestion and a hard sell off, but that reverts right down to a trend line. And we do attempt to get a full extension. A full extension. Now, from this drop right here, if I were to consider this a fully extend or in the ballpark range of a fully extended stock. You can see we put in this double top right here. This is not a good look. Any type of bearish structure going into these full this full extension, I would be immediately thinking, oh, okay, it's time to exit. And simple supply and demand. If more people want to buy the, the stock than sell it, the price is going to go up. Well, same scenario the other way. And this is a decent sell-off right here. This is 2018 sell-off. Now this sell-off is a, take top of the move, bottom of the move, around a 40, 39% drop. Now I think that's justified. Um, even though it's not to a full extension, I think that's justified. So we're going to take this FIB tool off. Now this is where, now I've made a couple attempts at this video. <coughs> Believe me, my first video attempt was like 22 minutes long. Uh, but this is where I had to dig a little bit deeper into this because it is not the more ideal of what I'm looking for. 
Now I can see at this full extension price, I do get a hard sell off, but you can see the price continues to run, and this is the price that we've had. Now, um, as this is not a slouch of a drop, this is, I believe, a 25% drop from top of the move, bottom of the move. But you can see, we're going to go into a day chart and look at how this these couple days transpired. This wick, during this week, the price was not here. There was a hard rejection here. Now, also, is 25% drop justified for a fully extended stock? I don't know. But we're going to go to a day chart. And we're going to look at how this transpired at this full extension. Now, you can see we gap up over top of our full extension and there is an initial sell off but the bulls traded up now the following day we get a gap up in price again this is to some people this could have been bullish to me I mean watch out and we do get a sell off right here now why do I think that we continue to push in stock price well, here is our COVID 2020 drop. So I'm going to take this FIB tool out for right now, and we're going to look at this COVID drop from top of the move, bottom of the move. And we're going to pull it all the way through the rest of our chart. Now you can see this is what I'm looking for in a full extension. Now, is this current drop that we have a justified drop? Now you can see at our first extension point right here, we get some... This is not a very bear, or a very bullish look. We're getting a double top structure into this. Now you can see our $96 gap is right here. We're going to put that back in there. From on this day in July, we gap over top of this exact extension point that we just put a triple top into. We gap up over it and we've never come back. Now I've already shared with you guys how I think a potential drop could transpire to get down to that $96 gap. Now this is a fully ex extended stock from the COVID drop, top of the move, bottom of the move. I can clearly see that. Now we're going to take this FIB tool off and we're going to look at this drop and is it a justified drop? 28%. Okay, that is a solid drop. Do not get me wrong. But what have our other full extended stocks done? Now, let's not forget. What years are these? What days of trading were these? The years 2020 to 2021, where I've already gone in depth of how I think Apple has benefited from stimulus checks and people having money. When people have money to spend, Apple is going to benefit because a lot of people use their products. Now, this is what the, this, this is the year. It just so happens that we go off course from this full extension in 2018. So from the top of the move, bottom of the move right here, this is a fully extended stock. But we continue pushing higher. Now, why is that? Stimulus checks. Everyone has money to spend. But going from our COVID drop, we get a full extension. Now, taking this FIB tool off, our other drops, we're going to go look at each one. COVID drop, 35%. 2018, 40%. 33 percent 43%. Sixty, roughly 62% we'll say and we know this one was 82% from the very beginning of the video those are full extension drops right there is 28% a large enough drop now what is our drop to our $96 gap that is what I am going to be wondering right there 47% drop now ask yourself before I end this video is a 47% drop justified? Has it happened before? A 40 plus percent drop in Apple has happened multiple times. And I've talked about how Apple has benefited from stimulus checks and people having money. I think it's reasonable for Apple to fall down to that price. And 
my valuation for the company that I ran also tells me, okay, I like this stock more down at $96, especially with that gap fill. Now, simple supply and demand. Are more people going to want to sell or buy the stock? Now, I'm going to put this initial FIB tool up there again. Here's my 702 retracement. Are more people going to want to buy or sell? That is going to complete the video for today. I know uh, it is on the longer side, but I want to get these examples across so you have an idea of what I'm looking for. That way, uh, in future videos when I'm uh, moving a lot quicker and you guys can follow me along a lot better and uh, we can be more efficiently, uh, we can be more efficient together. But I hope you guys enjoy the content and I'll see you on the next video.